N.T. Wright's review of Ernst Casemann's commentary on the Epistle to the Romans offers a detailed examination of Casemann's profound influence on New Testament scholarship, particularly through his rigorous approach to historical criticism and his deep engagement with the theological implications of Paul's writings. Casemann, a Protestant theologian and a pupil of Rudolf Bultmann, is celebrated for his dedication to understanding Paul's views on Christian freedom and his commitment to the Reformation's heritage. His commentary is noted for embodying the sophisticated German Protestant criticism of the last half century, characterized by its dialectical nuances and its passionate pursuit of the Church's relevance in the modern world. Wright emphasizes the productive tension in Casemann's work between the aims of historical critical scholarship and the practical theological implications for today's church. This tension reflects Casemann's dual commitment to academic rigor and the doctrinal implications of his findings, aiming to provoke the church into decisive action while maintaining a rigorous methodological approach to the biblical text. Also, the review contextualizes Casemann's work within the specific historical and cultural milieu of post-war German Lutheranism accentuating how Casemann's theological concerns were shaped by the backdrop of Nazi Germany and the challenges faced by the German church in its aftermath. Casemann's opposition to a bourgeois interpretation of Christianity and his advocacy for a theology of the cross are affirmed as key aspects of his theological stance. Wright compares Casemann's approach to that of Karl Barth, noting the grandeur and integrity of Casemann's theological scheme despite the potential difficulties readers may face due to the specific historical and cultural references that inform his work. Despite these challenges, Wright sees Casemann's commentary as a monumental contribution to New Testament studies, offering fresh insights and raising critical questions about Paul's theology and its implications for contemporary Christian thought and practice. Moreover, Wright's discussion of Ernst Casemann's work on Romans marks a pivotal shift in the understanding of Apostle Paul's theological framework, moving away from the view of Paul as a Hellenizer to situating him firmly within a Jewish apocalyptic tradition. This perspective challenges the long-held belief that Paul transformed Christianity from a Jewish sect into a universally accessible religion through Hellenization. Instead, Wright, reflecting on Kasman's analysis, asserts the significance of apocalyptic thought in Paul's writings particularly in Romans, presenting it as the key to understanding his theological motivations and objectives. Kasman argues that Paul's theology, with its roots in Jewish apocalypticism, portrays Christianity not just as a continuation of Jewish tradition, but as the dawn of a new era characterized by the Spirit's dominion. This apocalyptic backdrop is crucial for interpreting Paul's emphasis on God's triumph over evil and the concept of divine righteousness which encompasses both the act of salvation and the gift of being saved. Such an interpretation offers a fresh lens through which to view Paul's letters, highlighting the transformative vision of a new world order inaugurated by God's intervention. This re-evaluation of Paul's apocalyptic background significantly alters our understanding of the early Christian movement. Casemann's thesis suggests that Paul utilized the apocalyptic elements within Judaism to craft a gospel that transcended the early Jewish Christian paradigm, aiming for a message with global resonance. The focus on God's righteousness, centered on the crucified Christ, is indicated as the core of Paul's message, contrasting with earlier interpretations that placed being in Christ at the heart of Pauline theology. Furthermore, Casimund's approach sheds light on the transition from Pauline to post-Pauline Christianity suggesting that the adaptation of Paul's teachings for a broader Christian audience involved moderating his polemical tones. This insight into the evolution of Christian doctrine maintains the importance of apocalyptic thought in shaping the early Christian narrative, offering a nuanced understanding of Paul's contribution to Christian theology. In addition, Wright delves into the profound transformation in the interpretation of righteousness of God within Pauline theology particularly in the letter to the Romans, through the lens of Ernst Casemann's groundbreaking work. Traditionally, scholars like Rudolf Bultmann interpreted this concept as the status of righteousness that believers attain through faith in Christ, viewing it as a divine endowment that justifies individuals before God. This interpretation aligns righteousness with a personal, salvific status derived from or recognized by God, framing it within an individualistic understanding of salvation. Casemann, however, 
challenges this perspective by proposing an apocalyptic reinterpretation of the term. He contends that righteousness of God should not be understood as a moral quality of God or a relational status between God and individuals. Instead, he presents it as God's dynamic, salvation-creating power. This conceptualization points out the active, saving work of God as both a force that overcomes evil and establishes divine rule, and as a gift that enables believers to participate in radical obedience to God's will. Thus, for Kasiman, righteousness is fundamentally about God's action in the world, with the genitive theu signifying God's ownership of this salvific activity. This reinterpretation necessitates a reevaluation of justification and faith within Paul's theology. Justification becomes the divine act that positions believers within this new realm of faith and obedience, aligning them with God's cosmic victory over sin and evil, as manifested in the cross of Christ. Faith, therefore, is not merely an individual existential response, but a communal acknowledgement of Christ's lordship and the apocalyptic reality of God's redemptive mission. Wright suggests that this broader, more cosmic understanding of God's righteousness offers a richer, more comprehensive insight into Paul's message, extending beyond individual salvation to encompass the full scope of God's redemptive action across creation. Further, Wright dives into Ernst Casiman's emphasis on Christology, specifically the theology of the cross or theologia crucis. Casiman diverges from traditional Christological debates on Jesus' divinity and humanity, focusing instead on how the crucifixion reveals God's righteousness, defeats worldly powers, and challenges believers to live by faith. This approach contrasts sharply with anthropological and ecclesiological perspectives, particularly those reducing Paul's message to mere justification, or veering towards Roman Catholicism, as critiqued by Casiman. Casiman positions himself as a radical Protestant, critiquing both Boltman's Protestantism for its reductionism and Roman Catholicism for its religiosity. He views human religiosity as inherently rebellious against God, an idea that resonates with Luther's rejection of human righteousness and cleverness. Kazeman's theology is deeply influenced by Reformation themes, advocating for a faith that opposes the theology of glory and champions the theology of the cross. This stance aligns with Barth's and Bonhoeffer's critiques of Christianity as a religion, suggesting a religionless Christianity grounded in biblical exegesis. Central to Kazeman's argument is the role of Israel in Paul's writings, exemplifying the religious man's judgment and grace under God, thereby reiterating the Christological basis of salvation history. Kazeman's critiques extend to gnomism and religious triumphalism, likening Paul's and Luther's battles against religious establishment and self-righteousness. His interpretation suggests a nuanced view of salvation, repeating justification for the ungodly rather than adherence to religious norms. Wright underlines that Kasiman's critique of enthusiasts, viewed as a blend of fundamentalists and charismatics, underscores a rejection of triumphalism in Christianity. Kasiman advocates for a theologia crucis that remains relevant across centuries, questioning the distinctions between gnomists and enthusiasts and their theological implications. This approach challenges believers to reevaluate their understanding of faith, justification, and the essence of Christianity itself. Besides, Wright digs into the complex and provocative theological perspectives of Ernst Kasman, particularly his critique of traditional Protestant approaches to scripture and faith. At the heart of Kasman's theology is a rigorous stance against the reliance on historical verifiability or ecclesiastical tradition as the foundation for Christian faith. He debates that such approaches attempt to secure faith through human efforts and traditions, effectively turning it into a work and constraining the spirit within the confines of the biblical letter. Kasemon champions a view of faith that is radically grounded in God's unconditional justification of the ungodly, a concept he sees exemplified in Abraham's trust in God's promises against all human logic and evidence. This understanding of faith is accompanied by a conception of freedom that is deeply influenced by the cross, a freedom for radical obedience and critical engagement with both the church and scripture, freed from traditional dogmas and institutional pressures. Central to Kasiman's thought is his interpretation of scripture, particularly the Pauline epistles. He advocates for a critical, thematic reading of the Bible that focuses on the liberating message of justification by faith and eschatological liberation. 
This approach requires moving beyond a simplistic adherence to the text, the letter, to a dynamic spirit-led engagement, the spirit, that discerns the core message of God's sovereign lordship and the promise of future redemption. Wright emphasizes the tension between Kasman and other theologians like Rudolf Bultmann, noting Kasman's criticism of theologies that overly individualize salvation or neglect the apocalyptic breadth of Paul's message. Kasman disputes that many contemporary interpretations fail to appreciate the cosmic scope of Christ's lordship and the radical nature of Christian freedom envisioned in Pauline theology. Kasman's work calls for a reorientation of faith and biblical interpretation that appreciates the transformative power of the cross and the comprehensive dominion of Christ over all aspects of life and creation, advocating for a faith that is critically engaged, liberative, and deeply grounded in the promises of God. Additionally, Wright examines the intricate exegetical effort of Ernst Kasemann on Paul's epistle to the Romans, accentuating a profound shift from traditional interpretations, notably those aligned with Rudolf Bultmann. Kasemann embarks on a theological journey to uncover a coherent narrative within Romans, challenging the disjointed perspective that Bultmannian methodology may suggest. He operates under the premise that Romans, despite its complex composition and themes, harbors a central concern and an inner logic that becomes evident through rigorous study. This perspective allows Kasemann to weave together various elements of the text into a unified theological statement. Central to Kasemann's interpretation is the embrace of an apocalyptic viewpoint, through which he examines key thematic arcs like the Adam-Christ connection, the function of sacramental language in chapter 6, and the apocalyptic vision presented in chapter 8. A significant focus is laid on Romans 7, where Kasemann interprets the narrative I as a representation of the homo religiosus, a figure emblematic of the religious individual trapped in the cycle of seeking justification through adherence to the law, yet only encountering spiritual death as a result. Kasemann extends his thematic investigation into chapters 9, 11, positing them as a recapitulation of earlier arguments with Israel as a demonstrative model for God's interaction with humanity's religious endeavors. The concluding sections, chapters 12, 16, are seen through a practical lens, addressing community concerns and warning against the pitfalls of egocentric zeal. Wright commends Kaysman for providing a rich, detailed exegesis that challenges and enriches Pauline theology. This approach critically engages with Paul's theological construct, acknowledging its inconsistencies yet recognizing its enduring dynamism and impact. Kaysman's work, as presented by Wright, affirms the necessity for a nuanced understanding of Paul's theology, rooted in Jewish apocalyptic tradition, yet reinterpreted through the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus. The outcome is a call for a discerning critique, Satchkritik, in the contemporary exegesis of Paul's writings, acknowledging both the historical depth and theological vigor they encase. Also, Wright critically examines Ernst Kasemann's interpretation of the Apostle Paul's letter to the Romans, particularly focusing on Kasman's concept of apocalyptic and its theological underpinnings. Kasman posits that apocalyptic primarily indicates God's sovereignty as established through Christ's crucifixion, divorcing it from the historical and literary context of Jewish apocalypticism, which harbored a nationalistic hope for imminent divine intervention. Wright contends that Kasemann's approach overly simplifies and demythologizes the rich tapestry of Jewish apocalyptic expectations concerning God's vindication of Israel. Moreover, Wright challenges Kasemann's reading of the phrase dikaiosuna theu, the righteousness of God, accusing him of neglecting its inherent connection to God's covenant faithfulness towards Israel. According to Wright, Paul does not abandon but rather reinterprets covenant theology through the lens of faith in Jesus Christ offering a broader invitation to both Jews and Gentiles to become part of Abraham's family, thus fulfilling the covenant's universal implications as portrayed in Romans 4. Furthermore, Wright critiques Kasemann for potentially misinterpreting Pauline concepts, suggesting that Kasemann might conflate righteousness with kingdom and the salvific role of the Spirit, leading to ambiguity in understanding Pauline theology. By advocating for a more integrative approach that acknowledges the apocalyptic backdrop, Wright believes that the theological, historical, and exegetical complexities in Romans 5.8, such as the role of Adam, the law, and Israel's identity, can be more cohesively addressed. Importantly, 
Wright posits that Paul's articulation between Romans 5.8 and subsequently in 9.11 encapsulates a nuanced dialogue between Israel's historical promises and their fulfillment in Christ. This theological pivot suggests a renewed understanding of Israel's eschatological role and ultimately envisions a comprehensive narrative that sees the Gentiles' inclusion and Israel's restoration as central to God's redemptive mission. Wright's critique not only asserts the limitations in Kasemann's interpretation, but also advocates for a broader, covenantally framed understanding of Paul's letter to the Romans, highlighting its cohesive message of salvation history and the unfolding plan of God for both Israel and the nations. Last but not least, Wright's analysis of Kazaman's work offers a nuanced critique and appreciation of Kazaman's contributions to the scholarly understanding of Pauline theology. Wright acknowledges Kazaman's significant role in reshaping the discourse on Apostle Paul's theology by positioning it within the context of Jewish apocalyptic thought and indicating the centrality of the cross and God's righteousness. This, according to Wright, is an indisputable advancement in how questions surrounding Paul's theology are framed and investigated. However, Wright identifies areas of disagreement, particularly in the finer details of Kasemann's interpretations. A central critique revolves around Kasemann's implementation of his exegetical philosophy, which aims to reconstruct historical contexts to solve present questions. Wright posits that Kasemann does not fully actualize this philosophy, leaving unresolved tensions due to an incomplete incorporation of apocalyptic understanding. Specifically, Wright debates that Kaysman, much like Boltman, abstracts Paul from the crucial narrative of Israel's hope, thus restricting the depth of Paul's relevance and messages to be potentially aligned with the interpreter's biases, rather than historical integrity. In addition, Wright criticizes Kaysman for not sufficiently reconciling Paul's critiques of Israel and the law with the positive affirmation that, through Christ, the law, as the manifestation of God's covenant with Israel, is not abolished but fulfilled. This fulfillment, underpinned by the crucifixion, signifies the comprehensive realization of God's righteousness and covenantal promises. Wright advocates for a more holistic approach that reintegrates the narrative of Israel's hope into Pauline theology. Such an approach enriches our understanding by capturing the cosmic scope of Paul's vision which is inherently linked to the destiny and hope of Israel, finding its fulfillment in Jesus Christ. This reintegration offers a more robust framework where Paul's criticisms and affirmations of the law coexist as components of the divine revelation of righteousness. In summary, Wright sees in Kasemann's work a foundational yet incomplete attempt at addressing Pauline theology's complexities, advocating for a more inclusive approach that balances critique with fulfillment in understanding Paul's perspective on the law and covenant within the larger narrative of Israel's hope. In conclusion, in his analysis of Ernst Kasemann's commentary on Paul's epistle to the Romans, Wright elaborates on Kasemann's impact on New Testament scholarship through his integration of historical criticism and theological implications of Paul's writing. Set against the backdrop of post-12 German Lutheranism, Kasemann, a student of Rudolf Bultmann and a distinguished Protestant theologian, is recognized for his commitment to exploring Christian freedom and Reformation principles within Paul's texts. Wright specifically maintains Kasemann's efforts in bridging the gap between historical critical scholarship and practical theological application for the contemporary church, amidst a challenging historical and cultural milieu. Further, Kasemann champions a novel interpretation of Paul, especially rejecting the traditional portrayal of Paul as merely a Hellenizer and reinterpreting him within a Jewish apocalyptic tradition. This perspective offers a transformative outlook on concepts like divine victory over evil and righteousness beyond individual salvation, pointing out a collective and eschatological vision. Kasman's analysis of righteousness of God shifts the focus from individual moral status to viewing it as God's salvific action altering traditional views on justification and faith. Besides, Wright explores Kasemann's Christological focus, particularly his theology of the cross, critiquing both Protestant and Catholic interpretations for their limitations. Kasemann calls for a faith that critically engages with the world, recognizing the crucifixion as central to God's interaction with humanity. Additionally, Wright reiterates Kasemann's oversimplification of apocalyptic themes and potential misinterpretations concerning Paul's relationship with Israel's narrative. 
Wright advocates for an approach that better integrates the covenantal context, offering a more nuanced understanding of salvation history and Paul's messages. This approach, according to Wright, would imbue Pauline theology with a fuller recognition of the law, covenant, and Israel's hope, thus enriching Christian narrative and theology.